So uh, my name is Corbin Farmer. I'm a philosophy major and math major. I just graduated here in 2020, played basketball, forever Big Blue. A president like Patrick White and his wife, Chris, having them build the relationships and put so much emphasis on the relationships with Millikan, you can't, you can't weigh that. It's a special trait. It takes a special type of individual, a special couple. And I absolutely love them for that and thank them for that. And I wish them the best because I know wherever they're going to go, they're going to continue to build other people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm getting all verklempt here. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> well, let me tell you that Pat had been asked by a headhunter if he was interested in the interim position here. And it was like winter of 2013. And he said, oh, I don't want to be an interim. The guy said, well, you know, think about it. Uh, and so Pat and I talked about it a little bit. And we knew Milliken because we had uh, some friends in Crawfordsville whose kids had come to Milliken. And so we came over on a stealth visit, one February, late in February. And we um, were anonymous on campus. And I talked about this in my, um, my article in the Millican Magazine. You know, and we were just kind of blown away by the campus possibilities and students involved and talking just you know, very enthusiastically about what they were doing. We were masquerading, I think, as I, I said, uh, probably grandparents of somebody whose grandchild was thinking about Millikan. So it worked out really, really well. So Pat, I said to Pat afterwards, well, you know, let's, you know, throw your hat in the ring and see what, let's see what happens. So he didn't stay interim long. Let's put it that way because he came on July 1st. Um, my name is Marilyn Davis. Um, I've been working here at Milliken since 1991, and I am the president's chief of staff and the board secretary to the board of trustees of Milliken. Plus I teach in the Tabor School of Business in the fall semester as an adjunct uh, assistant professor of marketing. And the Board of Trustees had said that whoever was our interim president while we were searching for a new president could not apply. And after working with him through the months of July and then into August, I could tell this man was a Millican president. He wasn't just a president, he was a Millican president. He knew our story better than anybody. He knew people. He made every effort to know the students, his the, that personal touch that he has with people, how he's able to connect with just anybody. And it's genuine, it's not fake. So I was sitting there like end of August trying to figure out how do I talk to our chairman of the board and tell them that they need to reconsider this person as our president. And I was working late one night and we were planning for an exec committee meeting in the middle of September. And I was trying to figure out how do I pick up the phone and call Van Dukeman, who was my chairman of the board at the time, and stick my nose into this. And one night working late, the phone rings and it's Chairman Dukeman. And I said, hi, it's so great to hear from you. I said, I've been wanting to call you about something. And he goes, well, he goes, you go first. You tell me what you, what you wanted to call me about. And I just said, I know what the board said, that this interim president could not apply, but I'm telling you, this is a Millican president. And I've worked for a few, <laughs> so I hope I recognize one. I said, I really hope the board would re reconsider him as a potential applicant. Well, Van, started laughing and he said, that's exactly why I'm calling you is I wanted your opinion on Pat White. So at the September exec, the board goes into executive session and Van Dukeman comes out and requests me to call a special meeting of the board in October. 
And as they say, the rest is history because the main agenda item was to hire Pat White as the 15th president of Milliken University. So it was really kind of a cool moment and it was the right decision. And proof of that is these past seven years. Well, the impact that he's made is the one that really stands out to me is how he's connected so much with the student body. Um, and I've worked for a lot of presidents that did have a lot of outreach to the students. But Pat's outreach, I mean, these students, all of them knew him, you know, and he made a point of walking around campus with this blue cap. He wanted to know the students on an individual basis, along with group, you know, getting together with them in groups, his outreach to wanting to know what they thought, the good, the bad, the ugly, because it's their university. And when students feel comfortable enough to say, hey, P. White, is it a President White? You know that he's really made a personal connection with them. And I think that speaks volumes to the person that he is. He is able to connect with people. And he does it in such a genuine and caring way that you know it's authentic. Yeah, so when I was a senior in high school, still trying to figure out what my college experience was to look like, I received my acceptance letter from Miller King University and I opened it thinking it was going to be like any other college letter I got saying, hey, we'd love to have you at Millican this next year. Come be a part of fill in the blank. And that's not what I got from Millican. I got the basic jargon, but at the bottom was two or three sentences from President White saying, hey, Corbin, I'd love to get to know you better. Love to see you in a Millican basketball uniform this next year please come be a part of Milliken. Sincerely, Patrick White. And just that individualized part of a note really told me that Milliken is a place I want to be. If the president takes time to reach out to a student that might not even come to be a part of a university, then you know he cares about the students that are currently at the university. Playing Millican basketball, uh, it's as an athlete, you're trying to be disciplined and focused on the game. You're supposed to be in the play. You're supposed to zone out everything else. Uh, but for me, that was always difficult. But I was able to zone most of it out through college, except for three places. My coach, because he was calling the plays, and if I zoned him out, that probably would have been frowned upon. Uh, my mom, because if I zoned her out, I would be hearing about it later and I might not have a place to return to in the summer. And then President White, his voice was so distinct in the stands, you could hear him yelling above the crazy college students. And whether it be yelling at the great play or letting the refs know they messed up, uh, he really, really was invested into the game. He was there because he wanted to be there. If uh, people recognized him as president, great, he'll have a conversation. But for the most part, he was there as a fan, he was there as a supporter, which I absolutely loved. You know, I've always thought one of Pat's secret weapons is his wife, Chris. Because Chris is definitely the ambassador for Milligan. She is at every sporting event she can attend, all the Milligan you know, major events that we have on campus. And she, her outreach to people is as genuine as what Pat's is. She, she knows how to interact with people and go find out who they are and cares about them in the way that is as genuine as her husband's. I mean, they are definitely a team. Uh, Mrs. White, the first lady of Milliken. Uh, she's, I think, the strong woman everybody needs in life, that guiding factor, that guiding force. Uh, she is so wise and so uh, loving. I remember at dinners we have at her house, she's always at the door welcoming, asking about our days, genuinely caring, not just going to accept an answer, Oh, it was good. She wants to know. She's invested. And I think 
honestly, that's probably where Prasnik White gets a lot of his material, is because he, uh, Chris is so caring, she's so loving. I have a feeling she's just that type of person that it overflows and it kind of rubs off on President White. So he's an overflow of her, if anything. <laughs> One thing that really, I, I just fell in love with this place. We were here for our first, uh, that fall, after he took the position, they offered it and he took it. Uh, we were meeting the first year students and I didn't know what a FEM was. I learned really quick. And the FEMs were, um, had the first years, they have them kind of scheduled with different activities and a lot of, some learning experiences as well as just fun experiences. And we were waiting for the um, discussion of diversity and inclusion to begin. And a bunch of the first year students, just the music and maybe theater and dance people, kind of set up an impromptu band. Some had a guitar, they had those um, buckets that they could do percussion with, and and they just started singing spontaneously. First year students who just really literally met probably three days earlier. And Pat, that was Pat's first inclination, and I still have the video of it, when he said, ah, there you are, Milliken. And it was, it was just like a, a revelation to us what talent and um, enthusiasm and energy and uh, just and spontaneity governs the, the universities and the students who are matriculating here. So it, it was wonderful. And I grew up in Northern Illinois, so I knew about Millican all my life. And so when I came to Millican, I thought there'd be a lot of sort of pride in Millican, uh, and there was in many areas, but um, there was also a sort of acceptance sometimes of, oh, well, that's just Millican Pat, or that's just Millican Dr. White. Um, and I said, no, don't say that to me. We're Millican, you know, we gotta be the greatest college in the universe. And I know there's richer places and I know there's more famous places, but we have to imagine how do we make this place the best place we can possibly be and be really, really proud of it. We've gotten our swagger back because we're stronger, better, prouder of what we're doing. And that sounds like I'm just asking us to become arrogant pains in the neck. It, but when you're proud and when you're feeling good about what you're doing, that propels you to do more. If you're feeling, we can't do anything, we're just some mediocre college on the prairie, then nothing happens. But if you think, we're Millican, let's get going, let's get her done, we can solve this problem, we can take on this debt, we can build these buildings even though we don't have all the money that we need. And lo and behold, we've done it. As we hand off a part of the leadership, because the leadership goes through the entire institution, but as we hand off an important part of the leadership to a good guy, Dr. Jim Reynolds, we're gonna be shooting forward in exciting and interesting ways. And I don't know what they're gonna be. I don't know how that's gonna happen. Uh, I wouldn't know how it's gonna happen even if I was sitting here and gonna be president for the next two years. <laughs> I'd be figuring out with everybody else. But it's gonna be wonderful. Yesterday and today, I've been doing remotely, of course, um, a little welcome to um, the first year class, as they register, they go through a registration orientation kind of thing. And I tell them at the end, near the end, that I'm retiring and I'm, I'm passing the um, leadership of the college off to Dr. Jim Reynolds. Um, but that's only one part of the leadership. I'm really passing it off to everybody including the students who are not even on our campus yet. 
And if they hit town in September, August and September, and are fired up about me and at Milliken, I'm gonna be watching about what's going on. I'm gonna be watching what they're doing. And I'll be, you know, five hours away and uh, not intimately involved in the uh, daily work of the college. Uh, but I'll be watching and I'll be uh, so proud with every step that Milliken makes. Um, not because, not because I had anything to do with it necessarily, but because uh, it's good for our students, it's good for Milliken, it's good for Decatur, it's good for Illinois, it's good for the world.